today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I would like to save my relationship with Jeffrey. I have a huge problem with Dorisa having a relationship with her ex-boyfriend. There's nothing Jeffrey should worry about with me and my ex-boyfriend. He needs to trust me like I trust him. I think there's sometimes when she's very overbearing where she's trying to take charge and you know, she wants to leave. So if Jeffrey does not stop lying and grow up, I will have to exit the relationship. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Dorisa King and Jeffrey Turner. The two of you have been together for a year and a half. You are considering getting married, but you're not quite sure whether or not it's a good idea. I've had you fill out the compatibility test. I have your license with permission to tear it up. Should I think this union is ill-advised? Ms. King, I'm going to start with you. We know you love him. Why are you worried about marrying him? I'm worried about marrying Jeffrey because he has a few warning signs that just delay the process. Such as? Jeffrey is very caring, considerate, loving, passionate. He cooks, he cleans, he's very domestic, he's Ooh. great with my children. He picks them up from school, takes them to school, he does homework duties. He's very loving and pleasant around my family and friends, but Jeffrey lies, Your Honor. <laughs> lies about what? When, um, when I met Jeffrey, he said he was 24. He is 22. Jeffrey lies about everything from his employment to even seasoning the chicken properly. What, what employment lies did he tell? Jeffrey said he worked at a ice company. He would work from 11 to 6 in the morning, and he would come home complaining of his knees hurting. He's getting arthritis for being in a cold environment. His boss is hard on him. He makes him do more work than others. Mm -hmm. And I was totally... I was feeling so bad for him. Mm -hmm. I have went to the extreme of filling out applications for him to get him a new job, which I did. And when he finally admitted to the lie, which was very hard because... What was the lie, though? I don't know what the... What did he lie about? Being employed, Your Honor. Oh, he didn't have a job at he all? He did not have a job. Oh, that, you didn't say that part. That's important. <laughs> so he was... He, he, it was an elaborate lie. Not only he was not going there, he was complaining about the job he didn't have. Correct. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Mr. Turner, let me have, give you an opportunity to speak on that. Did you pretend you had a job and did you pretend you were older than you are? Yes, Your Honor. And, and, and why was that? <laughs> well, first, when I... Um... Communicate where it was through it was through Facebook. Uh huh. And uh, I messaged her and I told her I was 24, but I didn't want to tell her my real age because I thought if I told her my real age that she wouldn't even she wouldn't bother time. with you. Yeah. Yeah. I got so okay. I get that one. I told her told her I, I was 24, and then once we you know continue to you know talk communicate, I started to. You tell fessed her my up. Real age. I get that. How about the job? The lie about the job. What, what, what was behind that? I, I, I did. I was employed with um, the ice company, but it was for. I only worked there. It was like it was two weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, why did you pretend you were still working when you weren't? Because I wanted to make it seem like I had a job. But don't really you think, like at the end of two weeks, and there's no check, the kind of the gig is up. Yes. The gig is up. You know what I mean? It kind of like you didn't think that went all the way through to the end. You said big. chicken seasoning. He lied about chicken seasoning? <laughs> Those are just small lies, Your Honor. Another big lie was he said he was a professional boxer. <laughs> he was a prize boxer, <clears throat> Your Honor. He would bring medals to my home. They're still hanging up on my wall. <laughs> he brought medals. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner, did you lie about being a boxer? And did you bring her some medals that you really hadn't won? <laughs> Where'd you get the medal from? My cousin won them, and uh, he gave them to me. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me tell me another, another whopper. Your Honor, the biggest lie, and it's heartbreaking, Jeffrey lied about a very close family member dying. He told you a close family member had died and he hadn't? How did yes. you find out he wasn't dead? Well, first, Your Honor, I was very supportive. I'm like a chef. I'm a chef nista. So I prepared a vegetable and fruit platter to take to the repast. 
the repast never happened. He said that there was a fight that broke out and <laughs> we couldn't attend. There was no obituary. There was no RIP Facebook posts on any family member's page. For some reason, God gave me a sign, check the family member's page, Facebook page. It was very active and he was very much alive. <laughs> Did you lie about a close family member dying? And if so, for what purpose? Yes, Your Honor, and at, at, at first it was, the close family member was admitted into the hospital and um, had a little disease, which was a part of cardiovascular disease. And I think that, you know, he was gonna, he was going to make it, so I told her that he was that he was dead, that he passed away. Now and wait a minute! Now wait, wait, hold on, hold on! Somebody you love in your family is having a difficulty, and you say, well, "I don't think he's going to make it, so I'm going to tell everybody he's dead." I mean, don't you think that's just just like you know, horrifying? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes. May I? It was so believable because he said that the cardiovascular disease was hereditary and it was the same disease that his father had passed from and they found him in the same position that they found his father. Tell me about the car accident. Jeffrey said he was, a car, was in a car accident. He announced this on Facebook. So I responded to the post and he responded in my inbox saying that he would like to talk to me. He told me that it was a very serious accident. He was injured with broken ribs and a mild concussion, and his two passengers were young girls, and they were critically injured. And none of that was true? Nothing was true, Your Honor. Ms. Mr. Turner, why lie about that? Your Honor, it was, it was true. My cousin, we was going to go, he went to the bar with the two girls, mm -hmm. and he wanted me to come with him. On our way back from the bar, he was taking the girls home. Him and the one girl was arguing, and he hit the guardrail coming mm -hmm. around, getting ready to get on the parkway. And he got into a, you know, the accident, but told her that my ribs wasn't broke. It was actually bruised. Mm -hmm. and what about the girls? Were they critically injured? They wasn't critically injured. The one, the girl that was in the passenger seat, she just, she just hit her head off of the dash. Why would you do that? So what, for seat. what purpose? What, what, I, did, does it make you feel cool to tell a big story? I mean, is, 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 is it a, an ego kind of thing? Like, wow, look what happened to me. I'm, what is it? I wasn't thinking. It's just like... Yeah, but this is not like it. a one-off. This is how you roll. You just tell big, elaborate lies. Have you ever... Are you at all worried that you do that? Yes, Your Honor. I don't believe it. Yeah, I cannot trust anything he says on a daily, Your Honor. Does he lie to everybody? I mean, or is it just something he lies to he you lies about? He lies to everyone. He's told everyone these stories. He lies to the pastor. He lies to his mother. Everyone has been exposed to his lies. They just don't know the truth. You can't stop, can you? Now, Mr. Turner, you and I need to talk. I think you lie about things because you you've gotten into the habit of lying, and I don't know why you've gotten into the habit of lying, but you should be concerned that you have the... that, that you kind of, like, got this little alternate universe going on, and whenever something happens that you don't like or, or you're looking for sympathy, I don't know what you're trying to do, but you say, it doesn't matter what the truth is, I'm going to tell a story so I can get a certain response or so I can feel a certain way. It, is that what you think's going on? Yes, Your Honor. Does he talk this little at home? <laughs> he does when the spotlight is on him and when he gets exposed to the truth. Um, I can Why do you think he lies so much? I think he wants the attention. He wants to impress people. He wants their sympathy. I cannot trust anything he says on a daily, Your Honor, from seasoning my chicken with panko or making sure that the homework is turned in on Fridays. But recently, we were on our way to the gym. He just got a membership, and I wanted to start some swimming. Him and the children got out the car, and I said, let me stay back because I want to pray, because I've never swam before, and I'm going to learn how to swim today, which I did. And he said, you don't want to get out the car? Do you think I'm lying about having a membership? And that's to the point where you know that I don't trust you, and maybe you don't even trust yourself.
Does he lie to everybody? I mean, or is it just something he lies to he you lies about? He lies to everyone. He's told everyone these stories. He lies to the pastor. He lies to his mother. Everyone has been exposed to his lies. They just don't know the truth. You can't stop, can you? I could. No, I don't think he can. Your Honor, I even paid his mother a visit about my concern about his lying. And she told me he's been lying since his father passed. His father passed in 2012, and I believe that has made him a different person. You know what, Mr. Turner? It's time to go see somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody crawl up in that head of yours and find out what's going on. Because you're in a position where you... That's your default, is to lie, to tell the big story for, for reasons... That, that might not even make any sense. And if you don't understand why you're lying and you can't stop lying, you got to figure out where your little tick is in your head and get that thing adjusted because it, it'll back up on you. You telling these huge whoppers like that, family members dying, all this kind of stuff, it's really gonna, it's, it's gonna back up on you. And nothing wrong with going to see a psychiatrist. Nothing wrong with it. I go all the time. <laughs> go all the time. If something's wrong up here, I want to be the first to know so I can get out in front of it. You got to get out in front of what's wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You got a lump in your, you know what I mean? You go to the doctor, hey, what's this? You know, hey, what's that? You with me? Yes, Your Honor. I want to talk about what your concerns are about this relationship now, because we've talked about hers. I want to talk about yours. There's a, a ex that been inboxing her inappropriate messages on Facebook. What kind of messages? What's Talking she saying? Talking about how her face was that she was making when they was, you know, having sex. I'm with you. I, I, I see where you're headed. Miss King, is that going on? What are your primary concerns about this relationship and what's impeding for the two of you from taking it to the next step? Um, Your Honor, she, she, um, she's very popular on you know, social media, mm -hmm. and she has a lot of friends, but um, there's a, a ex that, you know, she told me when we got into a relationship that she would continue to remain friends with her ex. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's, you know, that's no problem because you had a life before you met me. Right. So, you know, have friends, go have fun. That's very mature. And the one ex, you know, been inboxing her inappropriate messages on Facebook. What kind of messages? What is she saying? Talking about... Um, when they was together, how good the sex was and how her face was that she was making when they was, you know, having sex. I'm with you. I, I, I see where you're headed. Let me, Ms. King, is that going on? Your Honor, there may have been some inappropriate messages, but I did not respond inappropriately. I've even told him, the ex-boyfriend, that I'm in a relationship. And he just gets upset because of the words he uses. He may say bae or babe, which I think is just like a normal flow that men say, but he may still have feelings for me. Bae or bae is one thing, but the kind of faces you make when he, you guys have sex, that's a whole nother matter. That's just wrong, rude, and tacky. Did you put him in check? I mean... I did. She said that she told him that she was in a relationship. And I feel like, okay, well, if you're in a relationship and you told me that you're in a relationship, there's a certain way that you should talk as friends and there shouldn't be a reason why you should text and bring up the sex when you had, when oh, you was in a relationship. Oh, oh, there's no doubt about it. Clearly inappropriate. I'm 100% on your side on that one. You should have just deleted it. I mean, because he can't respect your relationship. He doesn't respect you. You should just, you know, put a period on that one. You know, block them out. Don't do anything. <laughs> you said in your compatibility test that you that that your intended spouse was she was complaining, screaming, over controlling, nagging, disrespectful. Why don't you tell me? All right, Your Honor. For what example, I went and I bought a, a Xbox. So days that I'm off of work and. Um, when I, for example, when I get off of work, I make sure the house is clean and my priorities is in line before I relax, lay down. So her thing is, it's for little boys. Mm -hmm. Every day she was complaining and it was just the, every time she complained and complained and complained, 
it just gets me mad. So the one day she came in and she sat down and she said that she felt like the Xbox was getting in between a relationship. So that evening I took and got rid of it. Because if you feel like this is a hinder in our relationship, then I'll get rid of it. So I went and got rid of the did Xbox. Did he do that? Um, yes, he did, Your Honor. I complained once and I don't think it was a complaint. I just made a comment and said, I think video games are for kids. He took it to social media, put it on Facebook, and said, Facebook friends, do you think it's immature for a guy to play video games? Listen, he's 22 years old. I got a 21-year-old. He plays video games. That's he's, he okay, he is Honor. kind of a kid. You, Absolutely. You can't, you can't expect him to act like a 30-year-old at 22. He's 22. They play video games. That's I, what that is. I understand that. his age. It's a, the immaturity is, plays a big part. The age difference plays a big part in our relationship. But I did not force him to take it back. I just made a comment, and he took it back. You've raised the issue of your age difference, and I think that's a bigger problem than we've already discussed, and I think it's something we need to talk about. I think you have issues about how he spends money, and I think that, too, has to do with his age. So we're going to discuss that. There is beauty and brevity. I want to say that. I want you guys to tell long stories. You need to tell short ones now. Ms. King, you say that uh, he's irresponsible with money. Explain that to me. Jeffrey spends a lot of time on shopping apps or websites. Mm -hmm. He will buy anything from electronics to phones. And mm -hmm. recently he bought a phone off of an app, $55. He went to get it activated. There was a $265 balance on there. Mm. So the phone was a waste of money and a waste of time. He recently left the phone in a friend's car, and the friend will not return the phone. Okay. I would ask you to defend yourself, Mr. Turner, but I'm going to do it for you, OK? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. He's 22 years old. That's what 22-year-olds do. I got a 21-year-old at home now. That's exactly the kind of stuff those people do because they're, 20, they're, they're in their early 20s. They're kids. They're big kids. And there's nothing wrong with it. And you can't expect, you can't be upset with him because he's acting his age. You can't put him in the role of he's my man, now he's got to mature up and, and, and take all these responsibilities on when he hasn't developed to that stage. So you can't get mad about who he is. He is who he is. You can get a little warm with him about the, the lying about his age, and you can get warm with him about the other lies, but, you know, don't even get warm. Get him help about that, because that's an issue. That's a problem he's got. He's got to fix that. It's a tech. There's something going on there. You guys have absolutely no business getting married, because you're dissatisfied with his age. And if you're dissatisfied with his age, you'll always be dissatisfied because he can't become somebody he isn't overnight. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? Help him get some help. Hang with him, be cool, see how, who he matures into, and if you're still in love with that guy, marry him. And, and you, tackle your issues, do your thing, but don't feel like you're stuck on a trajectory if when you mature, that trajectory isn't what you want. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You sure? Positive. I hope so. <laughs> this matter is adjourned. Thank you. Honor. I'm gonna seek help when I get back home to get changed, to uh, better myself, to be the man that I need to be for Teresa, and to uh, get this relationship to last long. I will support him, get him the help that he needs, and if he shows no change in behavior, then I will leave him.